Bring Casey Joyner into the conversation here, ESPN.com NFL Insider. Casey Joyner uh, breaks down this matchup between the Eagles and the Giants. And uh, Casey, uh, I asked our listeners yesterday, I made a comment that really the loser of this game is out of play for the NFC East. That's how important I think this game is. Yes, they still have wild card implications, but I don't think the loser of this game can win the NFC East. Would you concur? Uh, you never know. I mean, it's it's God. That's a that's a tough call. Can can they are they out of it entirely? I mean, you're talking they'd be mathematically you know, no to collapse. You know? Yeah. Well, right. Mathematically yeah. no. But the Cowboys are six and one playing Cleveland this week. The loser of this game is going to be three games back with what uh, eight to go. Yeah, I think you, I think you're right. This this could be a, this could be a division elimination game. I I still think Dallas might come back down to earth. But if you're if you're that far behind, Dallas really has to come down to earth. And you've got it's it's the no margin for error game. At this, if you lose this game, you have no margin for error to catch up with the division lead. All right, uh, let's get into some of the matchups here. First, I want to get your take. You know, Huff, obviously, that's been a big story here. Not a big-time player. He's a bit player, but he is a big player in the return game for Philadelphia, and their special teams have been outstanding. In fact, they have two returns for a touchdown. He's had some other runs that have been near touchdown runs. He has not helped out a lot in the wide receiver aspect of the game uh but they make the decision to release him today how does a returner affect the return like is that a guy you can just plug and play you know put wendell smallwood or put somebody else back there and you can be equally as uh, successful or is josh huff the return man you know that special of a talent and that he helps them be as good as they are well, I mean, it, it, special teams it is more the team itself, the entire team itself. I mean, I'm looking at uh, ESPN Stats Information. Uh, they've got a, a thing called expected points added. It's a way of measuring special teams performance. Overall, the Eagles are fourth in that category. And when it comes to uh, uh, punting plays and such, they are they're 13th in that category. So that their special teams impact isn't as much through the punting game as it is through other parts of their game. So I still think they uh and even the kickoff return is where the Eagles actually rank first in the league in that category. That's where their biggest impact is. So as long as they can get the kickoff return going, uh, I think that they'll be all right in that in that sense. Yeah, and that's where uh, he kind of has excelled. But Smallwood also returned to kick for a touchdown. So, uh, obviously, the news today, Josh Huff has been released. You just heard Howie Roseman. We played that press conference for you earlier. But I do want to get into this game because, as Doug Peterson said yesterday, as he was unmercifully just uh, hammered with questions that the Eagles handled really poorly, they shouldn't have put him out there, in my opinion. Uh, and, and I know that's a lot of people's opinion. But Doug did say halfway through getting grilled by the media, hey, don't we play the Giants this week, so let's get into that, and I'll ask you, Giants have uh, struggled to run the football. Is that running backs? Is that offensive line? When you look at that running matchup against this Eagles defense, uh, what do you think in that uh, situation? Uh, the Giants have the fifth lowest good blocking rate. That's a metric I have that measures how often an offensive line gives its ball curious quality run blocking. They're sitting at 32.9%. Only teams like Jacksonville and Minnesota and, and Seattle, only you know some really bad teams, San Diego teams are just horrible at run blocking, are behind them. And so I mean they, it's it's a lot on the offensive line. They're also they're the running backs even when they're giving good blocking, they aren't getting quality gains. The league average in good blocking yards per attempt right now is 8.1. The Giants only have one back over that rate, uh, and that's that's Vereen at 9.1. So that's kind of a small sample size for him. All their other backs just are, are you know they're they're a step below it. So it is more the offensive line than the backs, but it's really everybody in that in that running game. So is this a spot where you think Philadelphia really uh, can take advantage of in terms of that they last week against Elliott, you know, uh, really tough matchup for them Do you and, and going against that Dallas offensive line. So is this an area that you think the Eagles have a decided advantage against New York's offensive line? Yeah, I think they've got a decided advantage and where it could help us that if uh, New York can't run the ball, they've got to start throwing the football and they may have to – they may uh, – decide that they want to go vertical against uh, Eagles secondary that doesn't do well uh, against vertical passes. But here's an interesting metric. Uh, according to ESPN stats and information, if you're looking at vertical passes, this is passes thrown 11 or more yards downfield. Carson Wentz has a higher total QBR, and he has, a, he has like a 1 one hundredth of a yard per attempt advantage over Eli Manning. So think about that's where the Giants' passing game is. They're, they're 
not even quite as good as the Eagles' vertical passing game. So the, the Giants can't run the ball very well, and even though the Eagles have a bad vertical pass defense, the Giants' passing game, vertically speaking, has been, you know, Eli's been uh, at, at Carson Wentz caliber level. So that says something for where their offense is. Why is that? Because Odell Beckham, Sterling Shepard, I mean, Cruz is not the same player, but they seemingly have, especially with Beckham, have the weapons. Why are they struggling, struggling much like the Eagles, to go vertical? I looked at, uh, at this a bit for uh, an ESPN Insider article a couple weeks ago and <clears throat> took a look at Beckham's uh, vertical production and such. His vertical production is basically equal as far as the number of targets thrown his way, as far as the number of yards he's getting. I mean, he's putting up the same caliber numbers. His numbers have dropped in a fantasy perspective, he's not scoring touchdowns, which is a big thing. But, uh, you know, it's not Beckham. A lot of it is Shepard. Shepard's taking a big step back. I think they're not getting very good pass blocking. And Eli is just uh, hes an aging quarterback, and some quarterbacks age better than others. And I don't think he's aging quite as well as his brother did. So he's starting to, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to say he's going to be in a full-scale decline, but I think we're going to see bad Eli a little more. We're going to see uh, good, Eli, good Eli the rest of this year. Well, we see bad Eli a lot when he gets pressure. Is this a game that uh, you think the Eagles dial up a lot of pressure? Can they get that without the blitz? Yeah, I think I think it's one of those things. Well, I think they should do, like we talked last week, you know, send the blitz out there on varying occasions. But, yeah, you want to get the blitz after Eli because I don't think their offensive line is pass blocking very well. And the thing is, though, is that you've got to – the big thing for the Eagles is you've got to protect that secondary because the Eagles rank 24th in total QBR and vertical passes. They're just, this is not a good team in that kind of coverage. And it's something where you can't put the second in a lot of bad situations. But, again, if you can get New York to be one-dimensional because their running game is so bad, if you can get them to be one-dimensional, then you can start doing some other things. And what I would do if I were the Eagles is I wouldn't necessarily be trying to shut down the Giants. I wouldn't try and say, boy, I want to stop Odell Beckham Jr. from you know, trying to hit a long pass. You want to do that. But what I want to do is say, hey, I think I can trick Eli Manning into throwing a couple of interceptions because that's the sort of thing. You know, that's a matchup you're more apt to win. Uh, Eagles have been very successful in New York and against Eli, 13-4, and 5-1 and one at MetLife Stadium. So uh, this is a matchup that they have excelled in. Where can Carson Wentz in this offense, as we talked about on Monday's show, um, 11 uh, yards is the vertical, you know, deep passes. <laughs> they, they're just not doing it. So is this a defense that maybe they can buck that trend starting on Sunday? Can they go deep against uh, New York? I would uh, advise against it. New York ranks second in the league in vertical total QBR, and they have only like 8.6 yards per attempt, and that's fourth best in the league. They Their vertical yards per attempt, only the Vikings, Cardinals, and Broncos have allowed a lower vertical yards per attempt than the Giants. Having said that, because that sounds like, oh, wow, this is a shutdown defense, for the last four weeks, the Giants have played Minnesota, Green Bay, Baltimore, and the Rams. And there's an argument to be made that of those four teams, the Rams actually have the best vertical passing game. I mean, Minnesota's vertical passing game is non-existent. Green Bay's vertical game has been terrible this year. Short passing game is good, but vertical has been terrible. Baltimore is not a very good vertical passing team. So the Giants may have been stacking their numbers up against bad competition. If I'm the Eagles, I probably do want to test this because they have had some injuries in their secondary, especially with the free safety, and I might want to go and test that. But as we talked earlier this week, are they going to allow Carson Wentz to do that? And Wentz has better vertical numbers than Eli, which is not very good this year, but, you know, are they going to let him do this? Because this is a matchup that I think if you can get vertical, you can go against that injured safety core. I think you can hit more big plays than some of these other teams recently have. Yeah, this stat I think says a lot right here, Casey. I'll get your take on it because I think it goes right up to what you talked about Monday in the vertical game. Carson Wentz is the only quarterback this season to lose multiple games despite completing 74% of his passes and a minimum of 30 attempts, which just means teams are just saying, we know you're not going to go deep on us. But Doug Peterson would say, we don't need to. We won in Kansas City not going vertical and not having that deep threat. So it seems like kind of a chicken or egg argument here. Uh, Do you have to go deep? The Eagles and Carson Wentz said yesterday, well, we could have won that game and we didn't take any deep shots if we didn't, you know, the, the, the fumble against the Lions. Uh, there's been some circumstances where they haven't gone deep and still should have won these games. It's like if you're saying, yeah, we can go short, we can still win. You can, but why would you, you know, it's almost like when we talked earlier this week, why are you going to give up the passing game? Just see it and say, eh, don't worry about it. We're, we're not going to throw vertical. We know we can win with short passes. Yeah, you can win with short passes. I mean, the Patriots win a lot with short passes, and yet when it comes time to go vertical, Tom Brady has a perfect total QBR. I'm not saying it, you know, the Eagles have a Tom Brady under center because they don't, 
But the idea is is that they don't say, well, geez, just because we have a short passing game, we can use it very effectively. We can go ahead and, and, and just throw short passes and forget about trying to, to go vertical. The other thing is the Giants are ranked fourth in the league in a, a yardage on good blocking yards per attempt allowed. So in other words, their defense, when you are running against them, you're not going to get a big game there. So you're not getting a big gain in the running game. You're not going to get a big gain if you're not going vertical. It's like, okay, so you're going to try and do a dink and duck passing game, and your pass defense is not that good against vertical passes. If I'm the Giants, I say, if that's what the Eagles want to do, I'll go ahead and throw some vertical passes, live throwing short passes, and if I'm the Giants, I like my odds. Uh, Eagles this week, um, you know, Doug Peterson talked about Matthews, Sproles, wants to get more Smallwood, more Barner. Is this a good game to uh, get the running game going? Uh, how's New York defend the run? Yeah, they're they're 14th in the league in good blocking rate, so they're you know they you can get a decent running game going against them from that perspective. But again, 6.7 yards per attempt on plays when they give up good blocking. That's you know that that's that's just a, it's a top five uh, metric, and they're just not giving up a lot of big gains. Again, and you look at the offenses they face too. Uh, you know, you're looking at uh, you know you're looking at those Baltimore. Those, these are not good running teams. So maybe even the Rams who with Gurley. I mean, you would think they'd be a uh, a top good blocking team, but they're not. They've done. They've had some. Uh, you know, he's been one of the least productive backs in good blocking this year. So, you're talking. They face some bad running games. So, if I'm the Eagles, I might want to test and see: is, Are you guys just stocking up your numbers on, against this terrible competition? Because that might be the case. But I, if I'm if I'm Philadelphia, I still want to test the Giants vertically. As good as their defense has been, metrically speaking, I think personnel-wise, you've got to at least test that. And not only that. You can't keep telling your rookie quarterback, I don't trust you on vertical passes, because eventually he's going to believe you. Hey, give me a matchup you like uh, player-wise. Where's a guy that you think the Eagles can exploit on that defense? Who, who should they go after? Um, that's a tough call. I, I wouldn't want to go after Landon Collins because he's been playing fantastic this year. That's the giant strong safety. I'm probably going after their free safety because it, it, it depends on injury-wise who they're going to put out there. But they've, they've been stuck playing third strings at time, and their star, their, their best free safety isn't even that good. So I'm, I'm going after whoever their free safety is. I might go after Janoris Jenkins, too. It would be a Georgia, potentially a Jordan Matthews matchup for me, Eli Apple. I, I might go after one of those cornerbacks and see if I can win that battle. Uh, but I might be also trying to just play call deep pass, too. And that's where, again, you've got to get some of this running game going and, tr- and get your get your backs going. That's the thing. I don't think the Eagles, if you're saying we're going to take, you know, because, uh, okay, are they going to you know, they're going to give the ball to Matthews a lot? Are they going to keep rotating it to the other guys? I think you still have to be a tell the Giants we're going to keep our power back out there. We're going to go vertical because if we just say we're going to use our speed backs and we're not going to go vertical, then you're just really limiting yourself play calling-wise. Yeah, and, you know, the Eagles uh, last week against Dallas, you know, they, they had a real rough time with Elliott earlier on the defensive side of the ball. They had a tough time with Elliott earlier. Then they kind of bottled Elliott up, but then all of a sudden, you know, they had the pass to Dez. They got Beasley involved, uh, and then late in the game, Elliott got back out there, you know. So you wonder how the Giants, what they've learned from watching the Philadelphia defense and if they have the personnel to follow suit because it seems like the Detroit game opened the window a little bit, Washington followed suit, they tightened up against Minnesota, but then uh, late in that game, Dallas went right back to what Detroit and Washington did well. You wonder, do the Giants have the right personnel on, on offense to follow that script? I just don't think the Giants have the kind of personnel that can get the they get, I don't think their run blocking is, is good enough to get it going. I mean, this is a game where I want to look at a parallel to look at something that I think Philadelphia you know, bodes well for their future. Minnesota's run block was terrible, and it made their offense more one-dimensional, but Minnesota doesn't know Odell Beckham Jr. Now, the Eagles can take you can maybe take some hope in that Sterling Shepard's taken a step back. He had that really great start to the season, and now he's just really struggling. Uh, the Giants really don't have much at tight end, uh, you know, and if Shepard's not playing well, and Cruz has been solid, but he's not, you know, he's not what he used to be. Uh, you know, the, He's not He's not going right. to do a lot of salsa dances, probably. So if you've got <laughs> that and the Giants are one-dimensional offense, I, you know, it, I think it's a favorable situation. If I'm the Eagles, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to get Eli to be bad Eli because I think that's the key to winning the game. But you've got to get Eli to be bad Eli and throw two or three picks. If you can get that done, I think you win. Uh, Eagles 13-4, and four, including the playoffs versus the Giants in 2008. Uh, they are 5-1 and one all time at MetLife Stadium. Uh, this year, though, 0-2 on the road uh, in the division. This would be a 0-3 start to the division for the first time since 2008 if Philly lost to the Giants. Casey, uh, which way are you going in this one? Yeah, I, I'm still, even with all the metrics, I just think the Giants, the, the, the running game's not going. 
I, uh, their passing game, I mean, even though they're throwing a lot of passes still, they're just throwing the same volume of passes to Odell Beckham. They're not getting it done. Uh, I think they'll make a lot of mistakes. I think Philadelphia's got more pass to lose this game if they aren't aggressive enough in play calling, if they do that. But if the Eagles are aggressive enough in play calling, I still think they're going to be able to hit enough big passes. I, li- I still think they do a lot of things well. So I'm picking them, but it's, God, it's, it's, it's one of those, it's a, it's a 50-50 game, but I just think Bad Eli is going to show up this week. Hey, it's, and this is interesting, uh, kind of going off of what we said at the top in this one, um, you know, uh, the – uh, according to the FPI, ESPN, the Eagles and Giants currently 6th and 7th, respectively, to make the playoffs in the NSC. With a win, the Eagles' chances of making the playoffs would go from 46% to 63%. A Giants' win increases their chances from 39 to 52. So it shows the importance uh, of this game. You kind of called it an elimination game in the division for that uh, division crown. They'd both be still in play for the wild card berth. Let's uh, take a look at some of the other games. Casey Joyner, ESPN.com, NFL Insider. Quick thoughts on these games real fast. Uh, let's go with, um, it's not a great schedule this week, but a couple interesting games. One, Denver, Oakland, Sunday night. Uh, what's Oakland need to do here? Because I think this is kind of the, this is the one, right? They're 6-2. and two. Everyone's kind of been like, all right, Oakland, this is the prove-it game. This is the prove-it game. And <clears throat> we had a thing on ESPN's Insider section, a roundtable, asking about David or Derek uh, Carr if he's going to be uh, Derek Carr if he's going to be an MVP candidate. <clears throat> My take was that he isn't. He has one good game like that, and if you look at the rest of his metrics, they're not that good. I don't like his matchup against the Denver defense, so uh, I think this is a prove-it game for them too. The A. Are you guys for real? I don't think they are. I think Denver's going to win this contest because mm. I think uh, I think Carr's going to make a lot of mistakes in this game. All right. Have the wheels fallen off the Vikings? Uh, uh, you know what, what's the, the you know North Turner steps down yesterday or forced out, whatever you want to do uh, or say in that one. Minnesota, Detroit, kind of an interesting game here. Uh, what's your take on Minnesota, Detroit? I'd say for Minnesota, it's if you look at their situation, it's like they they had Turner, but then they brought in other other people and said, "Hey, you need to be run a hybrid of these offenses." And I think that Turner realized that this isn't working. That you know, it's one of that old Madden saying: if you have three if you have three quarterbacks, you really only have any. Well, if you've got three offensive coordinators, you really don't have one. I think Dorf Turner figured out that uh, hey, this is not working for me. So I think they're going to be. Uh, I think they're going to win this game because they're just that much more talented, especially defensively than Detroit. But I think Minnesota's might going to have some problems down the road. I don't think that. Uh, the, I don't think their issues, their struggling issues of late, are going to be something that's going to clear up over the next few weeks. All right, Carolina at Los Angeles is Carolina. You writing them off? Um, not entirely writing them off. Uh, the problem for them is that more the problem, biggest problem for them is their vertical pass or their vertical defense is just abysmal. They've had uh, secondary injuries and they just don't have talent in the secondary. And the Rams, Case Keenan ranks seventh in the league in vertical yards per attempt, so he's going to be able to go vertical against those guys. Um, I think the Rams actually going to win that one, and then I might be writing them off. But Carolina, not quite yet uh, as bad as the NFC or as, as competitive as the NFC is. We'll call it that. Okay, last one for you. Pittsburgh, Baltimore. Baltimore came out like gangbusters. They haven't played well. Pittsburgh, uh, you know, the leader in that division is only four and three. We thought maybe at a time three playoff teams from the north. What's this one look like? Uh, this way, dude, it depends on if Ben plays or not. If Roethlisberger plays, then I, you know. Baltimore always steps up to play Pittsburgh, and they always play Pittsburgh tough no matter what the talent levels are. Pittsburgh tends to play to the, down to their competition level, but they won't do that in, in Baltimore's case. I think if Ben plays... They just have too many big play players out there for Baltimore to win because Baltimore, just even if they get Steve Smith back this week, which looks like they might, their running game is better but not that good. They don't have anybody in the vertical passing game. I just don't think they can end up big plays beat Pittsburgh. I, I lied. Tonight's game is actually kind of interesting because I think Tampa can win the division if they win the game tonight. Uh, they could. They've got injuries, though. They've, they've are down to third string running back. Uh, you know, the, you, it looks like they're going to play either uh, Barber or Smith. They're going to be the top running back. So. If, the thing is, this game has every indication it'd be a shootout because of the way these these defenses have played. But I think if Tampa's playing third string running backs, I don't think that they they're. I think their offense is going to take a step back. But having said that, they put it in Winston's hands and say throw 50. You know, maybe you can pull Derek Carr. He's Casey Joyner. Uh, Mondays and Thursdays, we break down the Eagles games on Mondays. We preview the Eagles games on Thursdays and all the top NFL stories. ESPN.com's Casey Joyner here on the Sports Bash. Take a look at his work with WWE on ESPN. Also, the fantasy stuff over at ESPN.com at Casey Joyner TFS on Twitter. Thanks, pal. Thank you, man.